Hey guys, it's the Diecast Man here, bringing you guys another video. Today we're going to be doing a different style of video, sort of a comparison type of video. Uh, I got a lot of comments about doing different comparisons, so I decided why not. And today we're going to be starting off with a comparison between Hot Wheels Elite and regular Hot Wheels. If you are unfamiliar, yes, Hot Wheels does make 118 scale cars, um, not just your, your typical like 164 scale, really small cars that uh, everyone thinks about when they hear the name Hot Wheels. They actually do make some really, really impressive 118 scale uh, Hot Wheels cars. So um, we're going to be talking about that today. So let's dive right in. So in front of us today, we have the 118 scale Hot Wheels Elite uh, Ferrari 458 Speciale. We have the 118 scale Hot Wheels, not Hot Wheels Elite, but Hot Wheels La Ferrari. And then the 118 scale Ferrari 599 GTO Hot Wheels Elite. So both of these are Hot Wheels Elite, and this is a regular Hot Wheels car. So we're going to be talking about the differences today. Now, um, if you're unfamiliar with Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels Elite, um, basically they tend to make a lot of Ferraris. That's like their trademark thing. They have all the rights to all the Ferrari cars. Um, and you see most of the Hot Wheels Elites, if you go in and search on like eBay or Amazon, you'll see they're primarily all Ferraris, um, which is pretty cool. So um, I'm just going to talk about the detail um, in comparison between these cars today. Um, so taking a look at this uh, Speciale Aperitif. If you haven't watched, or Speciale Coupe, sorry. Um, if you haven't watched my review video of this car to see it more in depth, you can go do that. I will leave a link to it in the description. Um, but just to kind of gauge a detail sense um, in this car, the detail is phenomenal. Like I said, this is the Hot Wheels Elite. So as you can probably guess, uh, just by common sense, the Elite means better. Um, but I wanna answer the question of how much better it actually is. Um, so we'll just take a look at the interior. The interior is really a good place to do these comparisons. Um, there's a little bit of darkness going on in here. Um, but these seats, starting off, these seats have like a, a rubbery feel, which is really, really cool. There is no carpeting in this model. And I think that's primarily because there's no carpeting in the actual car. This is meant to be like the super bored out, like street crazy version of this car. So... Um, but the interior detail is really, really good. So I want to move over to um, the LaFerrari for a second because that is where you're going to be most familiar. Um, the detail is really, really nice. The discs do spin through the calipers um, on this car, which looks really, really good. Um, but none of, the, uh, none of the vents here are real. This is all just a, a regular mesh. Um, and the interesting thing, this is specific to this, uh, this particular model, but this and this do not open. It's just your doors. And when you do open your doors, um, it's a little bit hard to see. Let me adjust the light a little bit. Uh, but there is uh, some, some more rubbery seats, but they're really pretty flimsy compared to what's going on in there. And this whole interior really is pretty much just black. The only thing that's really colored in is uh, your Law Ferrari logo right there on the passenger side, the prancing horse on the steering wheel, and the sticker for the tachometer and the gauge cluster. But that's it, it's pretty much all black, so you kinda get what you pay for. I think I paid like $50-ish for this model. Um, so that's kind of a, a telltale sign right there that it's not super great. But if we move back over to the Speciale, um, this opens, this opens, and the doors all open, but all the buttons in here are colored in. I don't know how well you can actually see that, but uh, there we go, that's a little bit better. All the buttons are colored in on there. You can see in the little bridge in the center and everything on the wheel. So that's kind of where your money is going. You're paying for that extra detail. Um, they're not really too different in weight. That's another thing that people uh, tend to not think about is like how much it weighs because I guess weight is like a big factor in like, did you buy a good enough model? I don't really buy into that, but um, a good a model with a good weight does feel good. Um, and they weigh pretty much about the same. So keeping in mind on the lack of colored buttons and the lack of detail and like just uh, 
pizzazz in the interior on the LaFerrari, if you will. Then we move over to the 599 GTO. This particular spec is really, really rare. Um, I haven't seen many of these like that. Um, but starting right off, this is real mesh. We love to see it right up here in the front. And once again, that's where your, your money is going. Um, the prancing horse in here, this is a metal piece that's like stuck on here. The actual logo itself is metal, which is really, really cool. Whereas all of the logos on here are just stickers that are uh, embossed on there, like the, the Ferrari logo on the front. And the same sort of thing for the Speciale. Um, they are embossed, but they do have a nicer texture. Um, whereas the ones on the La Ferrari have no texture at all. But in the theme of this 599 GTO, uh, these vents in here on the hood are real mesh, which is crazy. You can actually see that they are um, actual metal vents. And of course, the, uh, the calipers do spin through the discs or vice versa, however you want to phrase it. But um, all real mesh vents going on in this car um, and the embossed Ferrari logo, or not embossed, uh, the actual metal sticker um, on the back, which is really, really cool. But the interior on this car is really a force to be reckoned with. I mean, look at that detail. You can see the carbon texture on the paddles, the carbon texture in the wheels. I mean, looking at the seats, they're these like really, really sturdy, still rubbery texture, but really sturdy seats, where in the LaFerrari, they're just really flimsy. Um, and even just like looking at the door panel, it just looks so nice. All the carbon texture throughout there. I mean, look at the pedals down there too. That's real metal, ladies and gentlemen. That is real metal. Super, super impressive. And taking a look on the passenger side, this uh, stuff on the floor here is an actual metal piece, which is really, really cool. Um, and just the interior overall looks so much better. So you're paying for that extra quality. And Coming down to the bottom too, there's even some stuff going on under here. I mean, look at look at how sick that is. They bother to include all of that. And that's just not something that you're going to get on the LaFerrari Aperta. But now comes the real question, or the LaFerrari Coupe. I keep saying Aperta, I don't know, maybe it's because it's a nice day out. I keep thinking about convertibles, but. Um, and here comes the real question is, yes, the elites are better. You probably knew that coming into the video, um, but is the price better? And and that's where it really comes down to is is your is the value uh is the value better? And like I said, I think I paid like 50-ish dollars or so for this car. Um whereas I paid uh I think over 100 for this one and like 90 for this one. So it really depends on on what your budget is, but if you can go the extra mile, go with the Hot Wheels Elite. They are just fantastic. Um but just Judging by the, the interior quality, that's where, the, where I tend to judge cars the most. Just judging by the uh, interior quality on this car, you can just see that it is just not... It's really good, but it's just not quite at the level of the other cars um, that are part of the Hot Wheels Elite program. And like even just looking at the engine detail um, on this car, I always struggle to get these back compartments open. Um, But just looking at the engine detail in here, I mean, the carbon texture is just phenomenal. Really, really good. And this is on the uh, Elite car. And I'd love to show you the full engine bay uh, detail in this car, but this is all you get. It's it's just like a, a plastic piece. I've seen better on Maistos before, which is uh, which is interesting, but that's a, that's a whole nother debate. These are definitely better than Maistos, um, that's for sure. But it, it really does come down to price, and, and if you're watching this video wondering if, it, you know, the Hot Wheels Elite is worth the extra money, it is absolutely worth the extra money. Uh, just be careful that if you're shopping, you know, on eBay or something, that you don't buy a car that's not Hot Wheels Elite that you think it is. Make sure that it actually says Hot Wheels Elite and not just Hot Wheels. Um, but it is definitely worth the uh, the extra money. Hopefully uh, those examples were uh, good enough for you, but uh, I can't illustrate enough. If you can go the extra mile, do the Hot Wheels Elite. But that's not to say that the Hot Wheels is bad. The, the Hot Wheels quality is really, really good. This is the only regular Hot Wheels uh, model that I have. I don't have any other ones to compare it to. Um, but it is... It's definitely not on the level of the Elite, but it's still really good. It's something better than like a Maisto or a Barago. Uh, I think I'm going to do another video comparing 
uh, this car, since it's the only Hot Wheels one that I have, to a Barago uh, Elite series or whatever they're called, Signature Series, something like that. Um, those two are more closely related, but hopefully you found this video informative. Um, if you did, click the uh, thumbs up button there and uh, hit subscribe too if you want to see more videos like this. Um, if you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions for future videos, let me know down in the comments section below. So with all that, it's the Diecast Man, signing off.